Hey everybody, welcome to The Optimized Mind. This is Lawrence Lanoff, and I will be your host, guiding you in an entire pathway to the discovery of how to optimize your mind, your body, your money, and your life. The Optimized Mind is a way of looking at the world that allows you to simplify the processes that you don't realize are a waste of time, but are absolutely taking your life force. And in this show, I will show you shortcuts to looking at life, understanding myth and money and relationships and sexuality. We will look a, take a hard look at all of it, all to help you to optimize your mind and your life. I am a deeply religious non-believer. This is a somewhat new kind of religion. Science has in fact discovered God. And if you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, it looks like science hasn't been discovered God. There is no other God but a personal God. Einstein does not know what he's talking about. He's all wrong. Professor Hawking, in the very last paragraph of your book, you say that if we discover a complete theory of, of the universe, then um, it should be entirely understandable in broad principle to everyone and not just to a few scientists. The question of whether God is bound by the laws of science is a bit like a question. Can God make a stone that is so heavy that he cannot lift it? Look at the history of religion and be fascinated by it. Just look at the history of art and so on. Uh, but I, I don't think that religion has anything useful to teach us. One of the main reasons why people are religious is because they're persuaded by the apparent design of living things. And that's completely destroyed by it. For the last 200,000 years, we have been solving problems. And there are many problems to being a human that evolution set us up at least well enough to ensure our ability and capacity to survive and thrive. But in solving these problems, We've left our old selves behind, and we found our new selves coping not very well with the limitations of the symbolic brain that we have inherited from our ancestors. When I discovered the things that I'll be sharing with you on this show, and speaking to experts about, and doing interviews, and doing my best to take you on a journey. When I discovered what I discovered, it really changed my life because in a way it was like waking up from a dream in which everybody is dreaming, but they have no idea that they're dreaming. And so we humans are poised in a very interesting place right now. We're basically in a direction of a kind of extinction. We find ourselves locked in an endless battle and repeating the same stories and patterns over and over again, all the while being shocked by what's happening. And so in this podcast, I will do my best to bring up things, challenge ideas, and take you on the journey so that you too can begin to understand your symbolic brain and how that brain has been helping and hindering the quality of your life. Like any good journey, you're going to want to pack a sandwich. You're going to definitely want to bring your critical thinking skills because as I 
share different things with you, you will find your own beliefs challenged. And the only thing that I would ask you to do is to be open and come on the journey and see where the adventure takes you. Now, of course, the beautiful thing about the internet, about podcasts, is that you don't really, you know, you can always hit the pause button. You can always stop what I'm saying. And for some reason, it just isn't a pill that you're interested in swallowing or just even tasting or exploring. But if you do come on the journey, I do promise you a pathway to a kind of unprecedented evolution, an unprecedented freedom and psychological enlightenment that has not really existed before in human culture. And that's because our symbolic brain prevents us from seeing and recognizing the truth of life. And this is, of course, the big paradox. The thing that makes us able to invent the most incredible things to solve the most awesome problems is the very same thing that prevents us from seeing reality clearly. And our inability to see reality clearly, our inability to recognize the symbolic nature of our brain, our inability to distinguish between what is imagined in our heads and what is reality is, of course, the central question, the central exploration of this program. My intention is to bring the best experts in the world and invite them to explore this topic with me. Now, of course, I will be questioning the belief systems and ideas that have been vaunted and held up in society as the premier ideas. But just because something has been existing for a long time, just because people are unable to see reality doesn't mean that reality isn't out there. And my goal will be to take you into the reality of reality by teaching you about your symbolic brain. Now, a little bit about my background. Me, I'm a guy who, for a number of reasons, came from a very difficult background. I grew up on the streets of New York City. I grew up being raised by a mother who was relatively absent. And though I was not raised by my dad, I was raised by a very abusive, neglectful father who, when he was in my life, just really added to the confusion and lack of safety that I felt in my life. And furthermore, my mother had a partner who was an abuser, a child abuser, and preyed on single women with children so that he could enact, act out his bizarre abuse and sexual rituals and he worked some of those out on me. So at a very early age, from about four and a half to six, I found myself in extenuating circumstances. And the only way I could make sense of what was happening to me in my life was to start to ask questions. Why is this happening? How is this happening? And in asking these questions... It started me on a path because the things that I was curious about, I was not satisfied with the answers I was getting from the adults in my life who were trying to answer the questions. My father was dismissive and neglectful and non-existent, and my mother was 
for reasons of her own neglect and abuse in her life was in a kind of delusional thinking about reality. And so I had to navigate my way through life and through the treacherous, treacherous territory of spirituality and religion and even in some cases science where people would take pieces of reality and sprinkle it with self-delusion. And so on my journey, which was a long journey, which I would call a profound spiritual journey, when I came to the end of that journey, about 20 years in, I realized that that though I had some answers to what had happened to me, most of the answers that society and religion and spirituality had for me were just not satisfying. So whether it was karma, the idea that what goes around comes around, whether it was the idea of heaven, that one will get one's rewards in heaven, or whether it was the idea of punishment and reward or heaven and hell or the eternal battle of light over dark or the Star Wars battle of good over evil, the force over the darkness, the machine, the empire, whatever that was for me, none of those things satisfied me, whether it was Freud or Jung or anybody else. And so I realized that if somebody was going to answer these questions, ultimately it would have to be me. And so I began my own spiritual path towards truth. And that spiritual path led me on a journey. And that journey led me to an awakening. And that awakening led me to seeing reality clearly. And for the last 14 years, when I finally snapped out of the delusion of the symbolic brain and the delusion of the human mind, I found myself living in a world of reality, but I also found myself alone in that world. And that is how I've come to create this podcast, because I want to speak to those of you that are questioning, that are dissatisfied with the canonized answers that are out there, whether it's Buddhism or Christianity or Catholicism or Islam or any other religious form of thinking, and are uncomfortable with the answers and are looking for something that actually makes sense. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it. That's the point. You don't need faith. It doesn't, frankly, matter what you believe. If you come on this journey with me, you will discover the reality of reality. And that is the reality of your symbolic brain. I'm Lawrence Lanoff. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And I will see you in the next episode. The Optimized Mind is a co-production of Soul Light Inc. and LK Publishing. Available on iTunes. Subscribe now, share with your friends, and let's upgrade the conversation to The Optimized Mind. If you'd like to know more, visit lawrencelanoff.com. If you are still listening to this podcast, make no mistake about it, you are a hardcore podcast listener. And for that, I like to reward the hardcore. And so I'm going to read you a little tiny excerpt from my book, A Course in Freedom. It's available on Amazon. I published it almost 10 years ago, which is hard to believe because it is just chock full of really great material. And I'm just going to give you a little taste of it. This comes from the chapter called 
the collision of past and future mythologies. When religion transforms a metaphor into a fact, the world is in trouble. We kill one another in the name of our gods. The problem is that to create the world in the way we want and need it to be, we must convert, overpower, or kill everybody and anything who doesn't think as we think. We have lost touch with the fact that we are not the metaphors we believe we are. No one myth exists that is the way, and I mean capital the way or capital truth for everybody. Life is boundless and infinitely creative in a state of constant change and flux. It can't be controlled by any single story, religion, religious group, or mythology. If you are unable to see that your inherited religion is no more than a collection of stories and myths of dead people, then you are still suffering under the power of your myths and the power they have over your life. You are trapped in the prison of your mind until you can see that whatever you believe is just another myth and story about the way things are. Story. Moreover, all stories about life are no more than misunderstandings about the way things really 